I have four e-bikes, a 1,000 watt, two 1,200 watts, and a 1,500 watt. But due to an accident about two months ago on my 1,500 watt, it's out of service for the moment, and I'm awaiting parts from China. But I'll tell you what, my 1,500 is one of my go-to favorite bikes of all time. So while awaiting parts from China, I couldn't live without my 1,500, so I went out and bought another 1,500 watt kit. In this video, I'll be showing you my latest kit, a 1500-watt rear hub motor with an external controller, along with the SW900 LCD and a 52-volt 17.5-amp-hour battery. I'll walk you through the installation as well as a test ride on a steep 2800-foot ride to the top of UCSC. Hi, I'm Kirby with Augustine eBikes, and thanks for watching. You've probably seen my video on my 1500 watt kit with an internal controller. Well, several months ago I hit a rock on one of my daily rides and wasn't able to recover, so I went down throttle side first. The impact shorted the sensors of the controller inside the hub. I've had to specially order the parts and once I get them I will video the repair and installation. I have two 1200 watt kits which I ride frequently, but I miss my 1500 watt. So I got another kit, however this time I opted for an external controller. The internal controller is great, but if some parts fail, it is all contained within the hub. The external controller lets me isolate the problem separate from the other parts of the e-bike. That way I don't have to dig into the hub to fix it. I ordered the kit and opted for a 52 volt battery for this kit. I also decided to start with a new bike as well. Given that most of my frames have thousands of miles in them, I wanted to make sure that I installed the kit on a bike that can take that much power and torque. I got a great deal on a giant Talon 29er from a local bike shop, and while waiting for the new bike, I installed and tested the new kit on another frame, removed a Shimano cassette from one of my rear wheels and installed it on the hub motor, connected the battery and the controller, as well as the SW900 LCD, then programmed the controller and tested the kit. Once I made sure that all the parts are working, I programmed the LCD, the SW900, which I'm going to show you a couple of basic tips there on uh, how to program it. But all I had to do was wait for the brand new bike to come in and uh, transfer it. Uh, but I had to test everything, make sure the drivetrain was in good shape, and it was. Uh, and it was just a matter of waiting for the bike. I've had several kits that use the SW900 LCD, and I think it's a great uh, way of controlling your bike. And so I'm just going to show you a few, a few basics on it, and uh, if you're interested in learning more about it, uh, you can go to uh, several videos that I've, I've published about uh, how to program that and some other, and some other LCD displays. But here's, here's just a look at the uh, SW900. There are so many things that you can control on this panel. I'm going to walk you through what those functions are and what impact they have on the bike. So what you'll see is the three buttons on the left here are controlling your computer, the up and down, the middle of multifunction. A long hold, once the battery is turned on, will turn on the LCD display, and there you can see that's my odometer. You'll see various functions here, which I'll illustrate to you, and you can go through it. So this, this middle area is going to give you your speed, your battery, This is your wattage. You want to keep an eye on your wattage while you're riding so that you don't overextend the bike. This is your pedal assist mode. There's five of them here. You can go through them with the up arrow, one, two, three. As you go through, number five uses the most motor energy and the least pedal energy. Number one uses the most. It's an eco, it's an eco selection so that you'll, your pedaling is more than your, your motor. If you press the up and down arrows, this will get you into your, your panel, which has 15 functions which you can control. Number one is how uh, light you want your LCD display, one being the darkest, number three being the brightest. I keep mine on three. I live in a very sunny area, so I like to see uh, as much as I can. It's completely your choice. Number two is whether or not you want to register through kilometers or miles per hour. So the selection of zero gives you kilometers. Number one gives you miles. Once the bike came, I installed it on the new bike and went out for a ride. 
I've installed a lot of kits over the years, and when I took this bike out for its inaugural ride, something really strange happened. I started hearing this clanking sound in the hub motor, and I thought, how is that possible? It's brand new. I've never had this problem before. But it sounded like something was going on in the motor. So I kept testing it and testing, and I couldn't figure out what was wrong. I went back and looked at some forums, and I found a guy who that was really helpful. Basically said that 99% of any of the problems is wiring. So sure enough, what had happened is the wires coming out of the hub were too taut. They were too tight. And so I needed to give it some slack. And the minute I gave it a big arc of slack, it worked fine. And I've never had that problem again. So anyway, just did a little tip. In order to show you what this bike can do, I'm going to show you a ride up to the University of California, Santa Cruz. The university sits on top of a hill above Santa Cruz, three miles from sea level. And the ride to the top is a 2,800 foot ascent. It's a popular ride for serious riders in Santa Cruz, but daunting for riders that don't like hills. The ride starts with a short but very steep incline about a mile from my home. Now one of the things I noticed right away, the difference between the external and the internal uh, 1500 watt was the internal one had about five to seven percent more torque uh, a little bit more powerful not a lot but it's it's something I could feel but what was interesting with the internal one is that it, you could almost feel um, even though there are no gears in there it's almost like a clutch action over certain as you're as you're going uphill in particular you could feel it coming the feeling coming out of the hub whereas with the external one it's a little bit smoother so they're, they're similar rides in a lot of ways, but, but different, uh, but both equally powerful to get up these big hills. One of the things I do miss uh, about the internal controller 1500 watt is that it came with a TFT 750 color uh, LCD display, and there were aspects to it that were a little bit more sophisticated than the SW900, although I like the SW900. But I do miss having uh, the clarity of the color, the color display. And one of the things it did is it saved data versus every time I turn off the uh, battery or the uh, controller on the uh, SW900, my trip distance goes away. It does preserve the odometer, but other information goes away. So I kind of I miss it, uh, and I'll get it back as soon as I fix it. The ride continues relentlessly uphill for about two more miles until there's a brief flat spot. Here at a place called Westlake, I usually pull over just for a brief moment just to check my battery and my, my motor and my controller and make sure they're not overheated in any way because it's really quite a climb up to this point. So I just pull over, uh, just hand touch it, make sure everything's okay, and usually it is, and then uh, get on with my ride. At this point, I'm only about halfway through the ride to the top or to the summit of uh, UCSC. But, so I'm going to stay on the main roads predominantly uh, contending with traffic and students. But what happens, because it's only three miles from... Um, from sea level up to the top of the, the uh, university, you're getting some major grades all the way up, and it, and it pretty much never stops. It's pretty relentless. But what eventually I'll do is get off and hit the bike path uh, so I'm not contending with cars anymore. And uh, yet it's a really popular spot for cyclists, particularly in the early evening when it's cool, when the weather's a little bit cooler and the winds have died down. So this is the bike path that will take me up the final mile and a half to the summit of UCSC. Uh, and it's a very, very trafficked road by um, both amateur and more pro cyclists. Uh, there isn't time that I'm up there that I don't see at least two, two or three dozen cyclists and have to pass some of them, which is always a little bit strange on an electric bike passing people who are really cranking. Uh, these two guys are really hammering up the hill. So I had to be delicate with my, uh, my protocol to pass them. Here it is about 6 o'clock in the evening, and I'm just about 100 yards away from summiting. And it's such a beautiful sight when you get to the top of this hill and overlook all of Santa Cruz and Monterey Bay. Just a beautiful, beautiful sight. But of course, you know, the very best thing about getting up here after all this time is the downhill. That's that's 
equally as fun as just going all the way down the hill you just rode up. I hope you enjoyed the video, seeing the new 1500 watt uh, rear hub with an external uh, controller and a 52 volt uh, battery, 17.5 amp hours, which gives me about 45, 50 miles depending. But certainly not on hills, it's not going to give me that distance. But anyway, I enjoyed making the video and I hope you enjoyed it too.